and then we can start voting. Yes. So good afternoon, friends. Welcome to this uh, very interesting topic of, of which we all are curious about. And uh, curiosity to the extent that we don't know how it's going to impact us and the kind of work that we are doing. And for that, we have uh, uh, Dr. Paritosh Basu with us. And Dr. Basu is not new to us. He was a full time faculty in our School of Business Management, Mumbai, until last year. And now he has gone ahead for his further pursuits. Uh, and he is doing many activities, including as a visiting faculty to NMIMS. Uh, so he is actually uh, a PhD in, he's from the finance background, if I would say so. So he's the fellow member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants. Uh, of India and the Institute of Cost Accountants, and now a life member of the Computer Society of India. Uh, Dr. Basu's experience in MNCs particularly spans over a wide variety of functional areas, and he has worked across continents and countries. His areas of work include corporate finance, treasury, strategic planning, uh, IRF, IRFS, mergers and acquisition, IPOs, restructuring and so on and so forth. And eventually over a period of time, uh, as I call him, he has become a, a tech evangelist. So right now he is an expert in blockchain and digital transformation. He's written a book. He has delivered several lectures and uh, he is currently uh, a visiting faculty member to the Instant Indian Institute of Social Welfare and Business Management, Kolkata. No, no, no. And this IIM is Kodi Code. Kodi Code, Kodi Code. Okay. IIM Kodi Code. Ah. And he has conducted various programs for various institutes, and uh, he has a very uh, vibrant LinkedIn uh, profile and YouTube channel where most of his sessions have been uploaded. And we can go and see there uh, about his uh, insights right. and perspectives on various uh, digital transformation issues. So today we have Dr. Basu speaking to us on the way artificial intelligence is transforming, transforming our lives. What kind of applications do we see? And the prominent amongst them is obviously Chat GPT, which falls under the generative uh, artificial intelligence. So over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Deepak, uh, for this opportunity. As I said, that it's kind of homecoming for me. Uh, and uh, this is uh, my area of passion. Of course, I have never been in, the, in a classroom for uh, anything of mine uh, in terms of artificial intelligence and digital transformation, etc. See, quickly uh, to, to connect with you, uh, you can go to my YouTube channel and see most of my talks, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, there. Uh, you can connect with me, LinkedIn. Uh, it's about 18,400 plus connections I have. I will always reply to your queries if there is anything. And you can also connect with me uh, through Twitter. Uh, this is my book on uh, digital transformation, a prismatic analysis, and uh, it's a it's a, uh, a combination of uh, my 30s first articles on digital transformation, and I am on the 43rd article as of now. So I'm continuously working on this. My two present research are on digital currency and crowdfunding. So I'll be quickly talking to you uh, in terms of uh, what is exactly artificial intelligence, which is important for us to revisit. And then I'll go to uh, artificial uh, intelligence and management accountants. So I've used the word accountants here because I'm myself an accountant. So from the perspective of, of course, business management, I'll talk about it. Then definitely the most important issue is ethical dimensions of AI. Then. Uh, uh, and there are human civilization and certain perspectives of AI I'll talk about. Uh, then there is an important need for to us for us to understand 
the thinking quaternium of uh, digital transformation, and finally, chat GPT, which is the most uh, sought after topic of these days. Uh, quickly, uh, I will. Uh, I promise that I'll spend about 40% time on chat GPT. Uh, uh, I'll be using a lot of graphics which are drawn from open AI, open internet. So uh, please uh, take it that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm expressing my gratitude and indebtedness to those who have generated these graphics. Okay. And most of my presentations are from my writings, etc. So coming to the very interesting area of artificial intelligence, we the professors, we do not uh, accept any definition unless it is authentic. So first, uh, I will try to quickly revisit the Oxford Dictionary, where the artificial word is said to be something which is not made by nature, made or produced by human beings rather than occurring naturally. Then intelligence is the ability to acquire knowledge and skills. That is the, another very important definition. And what is cognitive intelligence? Another name of artificial intelligence is called cognitive. Uh, what human being can do, uh, a machine can do, that cognitive skill when a machine is taught or made to acquire, it is called artificial intelligence. It is the intelligence for cognition ability or recognize. That's the very important definition here. The next is artificial intelligence, what exactly it is. The correct definition as per uh, Oxford Dictionary is the theory and development of computer systems. So it is a theory and application that is development of computer system which are able to perform tasks normally requiring human intelligence. That means a machine is mimicking what a human being can do. And this mimicking capability are applied for visual perception, speech recognition, decision making, and translation from one language to the other, which you can see in Facebook. If you are using Facebook in Hindi, they will say, uh, "Can you? Uh, would you like me to uh, convert into English? Or if it is in English, they can, can we convert it to Hindi? That's kind of things. So what is the paradox here? The paradox is, that when a man makes a big lake by cutting it, then we say that it's an artificial lake. That means something which is not done by nature is called artificial. In the context of computer science or information and communication technology, it is something which is not made by man is called artificial. That means something which can be done by machine is called artificial. Uh, whether uh, whether it is uh, uh, a computer program or it is a, a computer uh, recognizing an elephant's picture. So, so something uh, which uh, uh, paradoxical is, uh, can I request you to please close all your sound systems and I would request you to put your queries in the chat box. And Deepak will help me at the end of the session. I'll keep about 15 minutes. We are finishing at 4.30. Deepak will help me in, in um, asking the questions from your chat box, and we will talk about the answers. So uh, artificial intelligence paradoxically uh, talks about nature to human being and human being to computer, then computer to human being. So that's kind of... Uh, uh, movement. So let's forget at the moment the normal definition of artificial that something which is not made by nature. Here the nature is being replaced by the word human being. So the artificial intelligence, the ability of computing machine to performing perform task which can be done by a human being uh, uh, in using her own intelligence. So the the artificial intelligence uh, is by itself a domain or a full set of which the subsets are machine learning, deep learning, and finally another subset which has come, which is neural network. Neural network as such is not an artificial intelligence, but it's something which is a complex algorithm to recognize the underlying relationship between a set of data. 
So it is uh, not one data now, two sets of data, 10 sets of data, when you put into the machine and try to understand uh, what is the re relationship between these two uh, several sets of data, we use neural network. So coming to artificial intelligence is something which we talked about is mimicking human intelligence in terms of uh, decision trees or what if kind of uh, logic and 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 uh, I, I I make the machine to uh, understand this what if logic and I make the machine to get some abilities of mine I means the human being by introducing some statistical techniques into the computing system uh, because computing system can definitely compute at a several thousand times faster than me. So I'm taking advantage of that capability of the computer to improve in performance of the task by making the machine to learn from the data. So that part of the artificial intelligence where a data is being used in a machine with a complex set of algorithms and statistical techniques where the data can give inferences and conclusion to the human being. That is called a machine learning. Uh, uh, if I show the computer 1000 pictures of an elephant from different angles, including baby elephants and old elephants, and finally, uh, and finally through a live camera, if I show to the computer and ask what is the name of this animal, the computer will say that it is an elephant. That's machine learning. Then what is deep learning? Deep learning is a subject of machine learning only, where the algorithms permit software to train itself to perform tasks. Like uh, uh, the here in machine learning, you have two situations. One is the supervised learning, and another is the unsupervised learning. I do not know. Suddenly, it dropped. Uh, Deepak. No, I think it's okay. We can hear you. We can see you. You can see my presentation. Yes, sir. Okay. So the uh, so deep learning is the subset of machine learning where it composed of algorithms that permit software to train itself to perform tasks like speech, image recognition, etc. So you can think of a humanoid who can speak in a conference, and after speaking on a topic of say finance or any area. 700 people started asking questions to that humanoid, which is artificially intelligent. And the humanoid is, if it is replying, then what happens? Then it is a case of deep learning I because think some people are not able to see the presentation. I am able to see. Uh, but you can visible? see, right? Yeah, no. even I can see the presentation, sir. Dr. Vishwarup is unable to see. I don't Maybe not know why it is happening. Rejoin. Maybe he can leave and rejoin because it is visible, sir. Yeah, to us it is visible. Okay. Should Maybe I if continue? we can change the slide once, let's see. Okay. Sir, because it is visible to all, so might be. Yeah, sir, I think it is visible. Yeah, now can, you now see the the, we... can you now see the next next slide? Yes. Yes. Uh, where yes. it is said yes. status of cognitive intelligence. Yes. 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 Oh, okay. Yes. So so. Artificial intelligence has got four stages. That is the cognitive stage, then the machine learning stage, then the much more advanced stage of machine learning in deep learning. And so far it was only one or two sets of data and no correlation analysis. And now when you go to neural networking with the help of artificial intelligence, we see the series of algorithms that endeavors to recognize the relationship with the number of number of sets of data, and it can mimic the human being operations with a number of set of data. If you have 10 sets of data in an Excel sheet, suppose each data size is about 20 by 20, you can yourself uh, correlate with the data. But if you have 2,000 or 4,000 or 1 lakh by 1 lakh kind of data, you will not be able to. There you will be requiring 10 sets of uh, one leg by one leg data, if you want to work on, then maybe neural networking will be useful for you. So artificial intelligence has got four, four stages. The first stage is artificial 
narrow intelligence, which generally used by, say, uh, guys who are doing meteorological predictions, uh, where 50 years data is fed into, and uh, they can predict the weather 365 days in a year. Then artificial general intelligence, that is the level of intelligence of a machine, which almost matches the level of intelligence of human being. Next is the artificial super intelligence, where uh, a human being is to be uh, exceeded in terms of the capabilities. But one thing has not been done as yet with the help of artificial intelligence, and that is called emotional intelligence tracking. Uh, you may be knowing that about seven days back, there was a news item from European Union that European Union uh, their concerned parliamentary committee has recommended to the main council that artificial intelligence applications can be used for certain purposes, but the most important purposes for which it has been banned is for tracking emotional intelligence and tracking pred predictive monitoring of human beings. Suppose, human, uh, suppose a police has got data about last 20 years uh, uh, violence in India or, or in the city of Paris. Now, on the basis of the learning points received through machine learning of the data or further analysis, if the police want to do predictive uh, arresting of people, that is something which artificial intelligence can suggest to police, which European Commission has already banned. So one thing um, now after doing generative AI, that is chat GPT or BART type of thing, now, digital scientists and data scientists are working on tracking human intelligence and with emotion. That emotional issue is being banned by European Union. I have a particular uh, robot, which I'll be talking about, which to a certain extent talk about this emotional intelligence. Artificial intelligence and business management, if, you, uh, if we come very short, in a short way, uh, there are export, expert systems which can solve your complex problems, which I'll explain in the next slide. Uh, this data you can fit into the system both in structured and unstructured manner. That means when you have numbers received uh, or collated from the transactions you had. Suppose Hindustan Livers is having transactions or FMCG sell all over India when those data are collated, those are structured data because those are collected in a manner in a, in, a, in an ERP system. But when you randomly put in various pictures of satisfaction of people while using a product and you try to make meaning out of it, then it becomes a structure, unstructured data. And as you know, uh, artificial intelligence can work on uh, deep learning uh, and, and business analytics and big data analytics where expert system can perform unstructured data analytics. Natural language, which is uh, uh, artificial intelligence can extract contents from documents and data. It can do machine translation, uh, which uh, I was talking about Facebook already applying it. Answer critical questions like today chat GPT is doing uh, or that human error did in a conference. Uh, create decision tree, uh, what if relationship you want to do a fishbone analysis of, from a particular data, you can do that. Classification based on commonalities of attributes. A huge set of data, maybe a, a, a 10 lakh line items data. From that data, if you want to make meaning out of it in terms of certain given commonalities, artificial intelligence can work on it. So you can use artificial intelligence for generating strategies and creating algorithms which can give you uh, elements of risks involved in various transactions. Suppose you have a geographical data of cells all around the world, and suddenly in a particular area, some social unrest followed, and that continued for some time. Or suppose there is a nuclear power issue on, on some area, and it continued social unrest for three months. What is the risk that has, uh, that, that has created issues in your systems of cells, the artificial intelligence, if you apply, uh, those, uh, those can be 
solved by your computing system through the application of AI tools, which can give you that riskiness of this particular uh, uh, event of a particular geographical area in India has created this kind of cells drop, uh, which last 10 years, it was not the data trend, but now because of this, this is the data trend. Uh, as you can do with machine learning, you can do reduced dimensions, you can do deep learning, you can do random forest analysis, and finally regression classifier analysis. These are technical issues, I don't want to get into it. Uh, then comes the uh, vision one. Uh, that means when you can't or cannot make meaning out of uh, one lakh by one lakh kind of data set, if you want to reduce the various dimension and make major dimension and analysis, it can give you the vision one kind of analysis. Vision two kind of analysis, it can give you deep learning. It can give you convolutional learning and recurring neural network learning. And finally, artificial intelligence can help you in robotics. Robotics can be humanoid. That means a, a, a robot performing like a human being. It can be soft robotics. Soft robotics is simple that which we find in uh, uh, motor car industry where assembly shops are run through robotics. It can be swarm robotics. Uh, if there is a disaster, earthquake, and a swarm type of robot can go through the disaster, man, disaster uh, heat area and find out some signals, which I'll show you later. And finally, it can do touch robotics. Uh, uh, if you uh, The robot can do something if you touch it. Serpentine robotics. A robot can cook food and serve also, and robot can dance. If you da if you dance in front of a robot, the robot can dance uh, like the dancer has danced. Uh, if if you sing in front of a robot, finally the robot can copy your singing and can replay the song. So these are the kind of system. Uh, if if you sing, uh, if you tell the robot to learn, listen to Lata Mangeshkar, Muhammad Rafi and Kishore Kumar, hundreds, hundred songs. And after that, if you tell, uh, play some song, and if it is Kishore Kumar, robot will say, yeah, it is Kishore Kumar singing. So that's kind of uh, like we say, Alexa. So what essentially artificial intelligence then does? Artificial intelligence can sense, artificial intelligence can think, artificial intelligence can act. It can hear, it can speak, it can see, it can feel but it cannot still smell anything. It can understand, it can perceive, it can assist, it can plan. It can physically recognize you. It has got cognitive skill, it, can, it has got creative skill, and it has got a reactive skill. So what is reactive skill? I have seen personally a robot in a conference where if you see, somebody dance in front of the robot, some some we were some person who was congregated to see the robot. He just randomly danced and the robot just copied in and danced again. Same way the person danced with the same music. So, so artificial intelligence has got very huge kind of applications. So uh, it can sense, it can think and it can act. So what are the things you can do? Just in one, uh, one slide, you can, it can translate from language. It can do medical diagnostics. Like a lady in, in a Bhubaneswar hospital had studied about 5,000 plus uh, uh, X-ray plates and sonography plates in a pre-cancer stage. And subsequently, she has also studied the uh, another uh, set of 5,000 data of the same people after three months. And it has been found that uh, she could predict from the bubbles in the stomach how, which of the patients are prone to go for cancer in a subsequent stage. So that's the me medical diagnostic was possible. Stock market trading, I, day before yesterday, I've done a post. Chat GPTs can tell you which are the, uh, which are the uh, stocks which are uh, uh, expected to give you higher return, uh, in how the stock market is going to go. Virtual personal assistant, uh, a, a, robot, a robot can be your personal assistant in doing many things. Like Alexa, if you say that Alexa plays the Kishore Kumar song. 
Sorry. Somebody had by mistake put it on. It's okay. Okay. Uh, so it can it can tell you that any email which has come from a spam source is can tell you self drive driven vehicle you are already aware of product recommendations it can give you suppose if you go to uh, uh, amazon.com and amazon shows you 100 of items of a particular group and if you have the ai software with you and if you give the software your choice ideas ai will show you only those which you would like to buy traffic prediction it has already been uh, being used by in india that in a particular uh, 360 uh, last 10 years traffic jam photographs and conditions have been shown and the system can predict that on this time on this day this traffic jam will be there speech recognition in any case i told you it is possible image recognition is possible in in fact in chennai image recognition is already being used in classroom where the, there is no roll calling system. Uh, uh, every classroom students photographs have been fed into the system and each photograph has been linked to a particular name and phone a roll number. And the classroom has got a, has got a camera which is artificially uh, linked to a uh, link to an artificially intelligent system. And the camera will uh, see the student present or not present for 60 minutes of a class say and automatically mark the student present. So you can see uh, so many diversified applications of artificial intelligence. So uh, Mr. Praveen Kumar, uh, he said that he is a professor of data science. This particular slide would be very important from, for him. And this is also from the perspective of a singer who wants to apply uh, artificial intelligence is very important. Whenever we have data in front of us, the data has three categories. One is low complex data. The, like if you want to play a Ravinder Sangeet, uh, which a beginner's Ravinder Sangeet, it will be a very simple rhythm. But if you want to play uh, Bhimshin Joshi's uh, classical song, it will be a complex uh, sound byte systems. And there is highly complex uh, data. So when you go to data analytics or go application of artificial intelligence data analytics, there are standard reports which says what happened. Then there are ad hoc reports, how many times it happened, when it happened, where did it happen? Then the third gen level of low level uh, com data, complex data is where exactly is the problem? So what happened, why did it happen, when happened, how happened? If these answers are done, the third category of data one can do analysis is where exactly is the problem? Why something has happened that way? The next level of data analytics which you can do, the system will automatically generate alerts for you. Like an email system today, generating, generating certain alerts by giving you a message that such and such mail has been put to your spam mailbox, what it is, it is essentially an AI based alert to you. Of course, uh, here the alert level is very low, but if the alert level is used from complex set of data, then it will be very difficult uh, kind of artificial intelligence application. So we now got into the domain of tactical analysis. Next is statistical analysis, which I talked about ML, machine learning and deep learning, where obstruse statistical algorithms are fed into the system and the data is analyzed with those obstruse, obstruse system. Then the data is used for forecasting. That means uh, uh, the weather forecasting, which you are seeing today, uh, based on 50 years data or 100 years of weather data, then the forecasting is nothing but tactical analysis of data used what is there and what is the trend and when it uh, what was the past trend and whether the trend is going to repeat or not repeat that is what is called the forecasting the next point is predictive analysis predictive analysis is something which can data can predict what will happen next up till this it was artificial normal or general intelligence from here 
we see a very higher level of artificial intelligence. Of course, not the level of artificial super intelligence, but uh, chat, generate, uh, chat, uh, chat GPT or generative AI is using regressive algorithms where it can talk, it talks about what will happen next and what is the best action to take. So artificial intelligence helps you the way you want to use it. So when you, when you use artificial intelligence for generating a strategy, a strategy for you is an integrative set of choices for actions within a particular industry. And it, you are expected to generate higher return over the long run for your business. If that is the kind of strategy you want to work, then you have to have your integrated set of choices which will be used in your system that is within the organization and you will be going and implementing that strategy, business strategy in the external environment for gaining competitive advantage and your objective is to generate in the long run competitive dynamics oriented higher return. So, uh, so in the context of a business person or a CXO or a business leader, what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence gives you the help in planning and also gives you help in tactical planning because this gentleman who lived about 2,600 years before from today, sometime in 544 BC, he said that strategy without tactics is a slow path to uncertain success. And tactics without strategy is the noise before the death or defect. So uh, the question here is, in the context of a business person, when you are teaching this artificial intelligence to a business school or an engineer or a BTEC student, you are to tell them that strategic objective of a business does not get served only by creating a strategic plan. You have to also create strategic tactics or tactics to execute the strategic plan. Artificial intelligence helps you both ways, not only in getting strategic planning done, but also strategic tactics done, that is tactics to implement the strategy done. So how this is done? Uh, this is a very interesting uh, loop called PDP loop. What is the PDP loop? It means physical, digital, physical loop. So long when you have not applied artificial intelligence, you have transacted data and collected in SAP or Oracle Financial, etc. Suppose you are Asian Paints or Hindustan Petroleum, sorry, Hindustan Unilever or uh, Mondelez or Nestle, and you have done millions of millions of transactions. You have brought the transaction in a digital platform now. And in this digital platform, you are processing the data and making the data to tell you either by, by machine learning or deep learning to tell you certain things you want this machine to produce for you. The machine can produce the way you want the data to, uh, anal to be analyzed by the machine or machine can on its own produce. So you can do a supervised data analysis or an unsupervised data analysis. Is Pravinji, am I, am I in the right direction? So whatever yes. direction yeah. you... Yeah, whatever direction you want the machine to do the analysis, the machine will do the analysis. After the analysis, you will be able to draw inferences from the machine, from the data. Once you draw the inferences from the data, you now create the second state of strategy. Now this second set of strategy is facilitated by artificial intelligence where you have done data analytics and intelligence has told you these are the areas where you are lacking. These are the geographies where these products are not being sold. These are the pricing strategy which your, which your uh, competitors are following, blah, blah, blah. So again, you follow one strategy and you again go to the marketplace. So you have brought the data from physical market, brought it into the digital system of your company that is artificial intelligence, Draw, in, draw, uh, draw a new set of strategy and again go into the physical marketplace and implement. So the, the, the role continues, the cycle continues 
and so art application of artificial intelligence for business data analytics purpose is not a one time job it's a continuous job because if you do not feed fresh data into your system you will not get the fresh inferences from the system and you will keep on repeating your strategy in certain geographies of the country those strategy could not may not be effective so one of the most important criteria for making best use of artificial intelligence is to use your business data which is called the digital assets of the company so what are the critical delivery uh, critical factors skill diversity you need you need your business analysis in a very big way you should be able to do visualization of data and you should be able to able to work on your smaller set of data to understand in what way you analyze that means before you put the whole thing into artificial intelligence system take a smaller set of data do your own analysis maybe in excel because there is no substitute of human brain and then try to make sense of it and then give it to subject matter expert who will work on it <coughs> who will apply their it skill and make your artificial intelligence based algorithms work they will design your algorithm and they will do either machine learning or simple artificial intelligence application without uh, supervising or with supervising the data and then you get the data and then from the data you apply your data skills this data you draw from various sources of course you can uh, online source you can continuously collect you can collect from offline sources you, and you can apply any any uh, artificial intelligence tools these are your skill set of your application developers and of course data school skill set so artificial intelligence doesn't work on its own you have to have a very very important skill set available and made in existence within your organization one is the business analysis one is the subject matter analysis application developer analysis uh, skills and finally data scientist they should be there with you they should be very strong in mathematics and statistics algorithms futuristic engineering experimentation and python and r because unless you have a data scientist available in your system you may end up doing wrong things with and and ultimately finally your wrong strategy may be developed in your system so so essentially artificial intelligence in this present industry 4.0 era makes you to do business with smart products and services It makes you to work in a digital supply chain blockchain comes in a big way here and makes you to work on productive predictive customer insight and productive customer insight essentially it throws light on how the business is moving forward so it gives you social media analytics that means uh, how people suppose it is fmcg products and people are putting lot of comments about so about some fmcg products in social media like google gives you a lot of understanding of what is happening on a particular subject around the world it gives you in a in a half fraction of seconds time 10000 inputs on a particular topic similarly in social media such things are happening in instagram facebook so artificial intelligence do help you in very big way so if you have to gainfully use artificial intelligence in your business system you must have the uh, strategy this is the word which has been coined by me strategy means ability to create agile strategy ability to create agile strategy so this is most important thing which you should have in this industry 4.0 era with the help of these skill sets business analysis subject matter expert application developer and data scientists after the data comes in the data scientist job is to work on it that is something which you can do and for that you need to have strategy 
So you should have a policy for the best digital data practice. The organization should not randomly apply AI. It should have a policy. Uh, it should have information gathering, analytics, and sensing and interpretation and impact assessment power. That means your intelligence, not only in the form of human being availability, but intelligence in terms of technology selection is also very, very important. Then you have to do your digitally evolved planning for business development using AI and machine learning. It has to have one more capability that is the interoperability capability. That means you might have generated within your information and communication technology system various data in various pockets. That means you are doing one pocket production oriented data, the another pocket sales and marketing oriented data, other pocket uh, say, uh, say uh, uh, supply chain management data. So if you have to do an integration, that means these pockets are, has to have interoperability. Like in blockchain, we say that unless two, do, two blockchain platforms are interoperable, success of blockchain will get hampered. Similarly, uh, the context is uh, multimodal application of AI in a business holistic fashion is important. And finally, privacy, security, and safety of data. And we always pray for blockchain. And, and you, you may not be knowing that I'm one of the top 50 blockchain influencers of India recognized by Blockchain uh, Foundation of India. So, so blockchain is very, very important from the perspective of, uh, of the, the privacy, security, and safety. Uh, Digital-driven marketing we're talking about. And finally, uh, it also helps you to do one more thing that unless you are in a position to identify which are the most rewarding operations, rewarding regions of the world and re rewarding regions of your country or rewarding product in terms of business and profitability, you will not be able to do appropriate capital allocation. So capital allocation to the in the right possible manner is a very important factor because capital has a cost. And if you are overcapitalized, you have a risk of uh, running, not paying the loans in, on time. So if you feel that artificial intelligence only helps in sales and marketing, this is wrong. Artificial help, uh, intelligence also helps indirectly for rightful capital application in the right possible manner. So these are some of the advanced application of uh, digital transformation uh, with artificial intelligence. I don't want to use, uh, explain all this. You can study it later. But uh, let me tell you one more very important thing. Uh, uh, Deepak, can you see this uh, slide on RIO analysis? Yes, yes. Yes. Sir. yes. Achha. If there are uh, professors available here uh, who teach uh, uh, strategy, uh, you can, uh, and of course, uh, Pravinji, you will also be able to uh, justify my talking here. That Vrio analysis, which is called valuable, rare, imitable, and organized, this analysis of testing any strategy, whether a strategy will give you competitive advantage or disadvantage. If it is competitive advantage, go ahead. If it is, if it is competitive parity, that means somebody can copy it very soon. Then if it is copyable, then it's it's a short-lived strategy. You can go ahead still, but you have to look for a new strategy. If it is rare, you go ahead further. Whether it is, it is giving you competitive advantage today, tomorrow somebody else can do something differently. So your competitive advantage could be short-lived or long-lived. That is the inimitable analysis. And finally, whether the company is today capable of using that particular strategy. That is the, you have this unused competitive advantage with you so, and, and you go ahead. So if you want to do a strategy formulation, there the job doesn't end. The job, the strategy has to be tested through bio analysis. And this bio analysis, if you have to apply to finally go ahead with a long-term and a short-term strategy, Again, you can do your AI, ML, and deep learning uh, uh, program in such a manner. It can give you useful points on, on uh, 
and applications of artificial intelligence. Uh, quickly tell you the status of India. India used to be earlier 19th in artificial intelligence in the world. But uh, as of now, India's position is 32nd in the world. And in terms of South Central Asia, uh, India's position is number one. Uh, there is no point in talking about this because uh, the Indian Indian technologies, uh, Pravinji, it's a bad luck of India that Indian technologies who are doing artificial intelligence oriented application, uh, they are only going abroad and creating this, uh, creating the software and the, so, and the West is getting benefit out of it. Yesterday I was reading a document on chat GPT scientist, four scientists of uh, AI, open AI has created a knowledge paper on chat GPT, which I will publish in tomorrow's LinkedIn post of mine, like the uh, document by Satoshi Nakamoto on uh, Bitcoin. So that particular, uh, that particular uh, document will give you enough knowledge on chat GPT and the algorithms applied for chat GPT. Believe me, the first author of that document is an Indian. So, so Indians, this graph, I don't believe, uh, could be that we could not do it in terms of sitting in India, but Indian brains are contributing 30% to the overall world documentation. Now, this particular slide is entirely my creation. You will not get in any book, uh, which I have written about in one of the articles. What are the 12 R principle of digital solution designing with artificial intelligence? Uh, if you want, you can take a snap of this particular slide by your camera. You will not get in any book. The, I'll read about what are these 12 R principles. Selection of the right AI project, executing the same using the right set of data for the right purpose, at the right time, with the right analysis and MLs, deploying the right tools and software by the right manpower for generating the right outputs that are relevant for taking the right decisions and updating past learning points at right intervals again with right set of data at the right cost for the right return. So unless these 12 hours are satisfied when you are thinking of an artificial intelligence oriented project, you will not be able to get success with applications of AI. Uh, in my book, Digital Transformation, A Prismatic View, uh, in chapter 10.3, this particular uh, article I have written about these 12 R principles. Uh, here is a very interesting uh, information about uh, artificial intelligence application. And this gentleman, uh, Ian Lee Khan, is the director of Facebook Research. He said that despite these astonishing advances, we are long way from machines that are as intelligent as humans or even rats. So far, we have seen only 5% of what AI can do. So don't worry, AI can do 100% and we can. We have only seen 5% of it. So what are the ethical dimensions of artificial intelligence? Very, very important. There are three dimensions of artificial intelligence from the ethic point of view. One is the physical domain ethics, information domain ethics, and cognitive domain ethics. So. When physical domain ethics and cognitive domain ethics will interfere, uh, we'll get robot, robotic ethics and machine ethics because uh, uh, your, your uh, physical domain ethics talks about technology ethics and information domain ethics talks about information ethics and cognitive domain ethics talks about machine learning and AI ethics. Now, when technolo technological ethics and AI ethics intersect, you get robotic and machine ethics. When physical domain, that is techno ethics and information ethics intersects, you get computer ethics or ICT ethics. 
when inf uh, information ethics and AI ethics intersect, you get computational ethics. And when all the three dimensions of ethics intersect, you get digital ethics. Digital ethics is a very, very important point. One of the major question which has been raised about chat GPT is that, is it really maintaining digital ethics? One of the analysis or analogy can be done that when nuclear power and nuclear arsenal was discovered in the world, people thought that it is, it is going to kill the human civilization. Even today, no nuclear weapon has been used even for once. But new, many countries in the world today are nuclear power enabled. Similarly, if you apply this logic to ChatGPT, ChatGPT is kind of a bomb because people say that it will, it will reduce the thinking power of the upcoming generation. But the question is, uh, will, will machine run ahead of man or man run ahead of machine? That's the very important. As long as the digital ethics are there, both with the corporates and human being, the man will always run ahead of artificial intelligence. And that is where the, uh, the issue comes in, remove darkness from AI, from ethical issues. So ethical issues should not be kept in dark domain. Uh, I will talk about only two blocks here. If your AI is applied for safety, AI is applied for human interaction, AI is applied for cyber security, AI applied for privacy control, etc. AI you are applying for the best and betterment of human being. What AI can be, AI can create threats for human cognitive abilities. AI can generate singularity and AI can generate robot rights. So AI is a very powerful thing. What you have to do by human thinking power is to remove the black part of AI. So maintaining ethics of artificial intelligence is very, 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 very important. So uh, uh, I'll give you two research reports. In, 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 there is a research report uh, by Oxford and International Development Research Center, IDRC, is a very world famous center. It says that by 2030, 15 trillion uh, will be added to global economy by AI technology. And uh, the important point which is talking about here is that the upper part of the globe, that means if you divide the globe horizontally into two, the upper part of the globe will be benefited by the contribution done to artificial intelligence by lower part of the growth. And there will be discrimination in income distribution. It does mean people who will generate money out of applications of AI will not get money from the value it generates. That means there will be benefit, the Europe and US will be benefited, but the creation of AI based value will be done by people in Asia. So most important thing from the artificial intelligence point of view, unless you, it does shared value application and shared value creation, and the people who are benefiting from artificial intelligence do not think of sharing the value which is additionally getting created by artificial intelligence. I am I am thinking that the, the, the ethical part will not be maintained. So it is not the ethics of artificial intelligence which is important. Ethics of value sharing is also important. Then another research was done by Elon University where he, 979 people were asked is it most likely that advancing AI related technology will enhance human capacities and empower them? Will most people be better off than they are today? Is it most likely that those will lessen human autonomy and agency? That means three issues were raised to 979 people, whether the human capacities and empowerment will be more. AI-related technology will enhance human capacity and empower people, whether it will make people better off and whether it will lessen human autonomy. That means we will be slaves to AI. 63% people said that with the application of AI, uh, the, the human being or human humanity will be better off. 
37% sales, it will not be. And uh, of course, 25 respondents didn't talk about it. But the point here is, if I promise to use artificial intelligence or for the betterment of humanity, what artificial intelligence can do wrong to me? So that's the most important part. Skepticism is existing in the minds of common people. So the most important thing is OECD said that uh, when you do artificial intelligence application, poster innovation and trust. When you innovate with artificial intelligence, also innovate for trust creation. And you promote responsible stewardship. That means do something which is ethical. And that can be done when you respect human right, which is there in the United Nations Human Rights Declaration. Talk about inclusive growth, sustainable development, human-centered value creation and fairness, transparency and explainability, and robustness. So these are some of the most important factors which you should maintain at the time of taking up any AI project. So uh, this is what I was talking about, the humanity part of uh, robotics. Uh, now, uh, Manasji, you will get soon a very interesting application of why. This particular swarm robot in a disaster-prone area, this robot can go into the spaces and generate and sense whether some people are getting stuck in a debris. And this robot can sense and send uh, a signal to its, uh, to its uh, safe area operator and then the people can hit that particular place for taking out people from debris. This, is, this particular robot is used in mines very big way. Artificial intelligence uh, oriented robots are today becoming judges of beauty competition. You can see from here. This is a very interesting uh, robot. Uh, this is from Manas Shi Yu. A particular uh, robot was given 1,000 most popular music of the world. And this robot was asked to create a tune by combining all the 1,000 tunes. And the robot created a tune, which is one of the most melodious tunes human being has ever heard. So this is a benefit of artificial intelligence. That means by listening to music, if you make the artificial intelligent orient, oriented software in such a manner, you can make best use of things, okay? You can make best use of things. This is a very interesting robot. This Deepak, this is for you, business managers. Uh, this is, this robot says that uh, this robot is something like a personal assistant. Suppose uh, you put this robot into my room and I'm a very angry boss and Deepak is a very cool boss and we deal with same kind of people. After 20, uh, one year or 30, 40, 50 sessions of mine with the same junior of mine who commonly reports to Deepak and me, the robot will give an information to you that you are a person who is generally angry with your subordinate and uh, Deepak is generally a cool person, deals well. How the robot does it? Robot has been told what are the language a person use, what are the words a person use, which is uh, uh, angry oriented language, and what is the voice tone and tenor when a person is angry, how the voice would like to be, would be. And Deepak's voice is always cool and Dr. Basu's voice is always harsh. So the robot will say, Dr. Basu is a bad person. So this is the artificial intelligence can do. Then this goes to the boss of Deepak and Paritos Basu. And boss reprimands Paritos Basu and gives kudos to Deepak. Because that is what artificial intelligence can do. So That uh, is assuming uh, that the boss is not a robot. Boss is not a robot. <laughs> boss is a human being, but boss is being <laughs> helped. Boss is being helped by this uh, robot very simple robot uh, but for understanding how Deepak is doing. Boss might have, without letting you know, has kept it in your room. That could be possible. Okay, so uh, this part I will not spend much of a time. Uh, some other day, Deepak, maybe next month we can think of a session on quadrennium of thinking. 
so most important thing which people use is the for artificial intelligence application is lab brain uh, what is important for us to discuss uh, to apply is right brain for balancing it i'll come into it later and and what you need in artificial intelligence application four types of thinking one is critical thinking strategic thinking decision thinking and design radical thinking Uh, decision thinking also will be design thinking oriented uh, issue so quadrennium of thinking is very very important and now i will come to the most uh, deepak uh, we can spend a full one and a half hours time on this thinking quadrennium as a very very important i have spent with the com particular companies middle level executive two full days that means 16 hours on this one these two slide this slide and this slide very very in interesting area one can spend time so we should be learning uh, mr pravin uh, pravin ji uh, professor you must tell your students that you are engineers you mostly use left brain but try to learn using right brain also right so okay. we have a subject on critical thinking Okay. And in that we talk about you know right side and left side creative thinking part and logical thinking part yeah we yeah 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 not in depth obviously but yeah we do talk about okay it. now uh, now uh, uh, i before i start chat gpt i'll spend about 15 minutes with chat gpt uh, i will ask you a question a very simple question if i go to a petrol pump or a car service station and tell the people that many कार में थोड़ा मोबिल डाल दो व्हाट एग्जैक्टली आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट एम आई टॉकिंग अबाउट मोबिल और आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट लुब्रिकेटिंग ऑयल लुब्रिकेटिंग ऑयल ऑब्वियसली करेक्ट सो चैट जीपीटी इज द ब्रांड नेम ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर चैट बॉट व्हिच इज मोर पावरफुल दैन अ नॉर्मल चैट बॉट व्हिच वी देयर इज अ चैट बॉट इन एचडीएफसी bank or a kotak bank or icsa bank whenever or in state bank of india net banking system whenever you go to net banking you can talk to the chat bot and that is also kind of a pre trained transformer what is a pre trained transformer gpt means generative pre trained transformer what it transforms it takes when you ask a question to the computer the computer scrapes thousands and thousands of data available in the open space makes through its algorithm makes the most possible answer while it does the answering it it does another job it does regressive algorithm that means if an answer comes to in front of it which is a past answer and after that there is another answer available the the system compares these two answer against your question and takes a decision the system by itself takes a decision which is the most common and better answer and which is the most current answer and picks up that answer so chat gpt is nothing but the name of a of a company's chatbot and the name of the company is open ai and name of the technology is chatbot and name of the brand of the chatbot is chat gpt it is called generative ai generative artificial intelligence and in uh, an ai application which can generate answer in voice mode read and write mode or read mode okay it can read your query then it can scrape the whole world of information available then give you an answer in writing or voice it out now let me give you an explanation example of a chat gpt item uh suppose you are in us if you are a south indian friend and he is he loves chettina chicken and you are in us and you are a bengali like me uh, uh your friend says that hi i want to eat ch uh, chettina chicken i have not eat chettina chicken for long because i am a tamilian uh, so so i i would like to come to your house and you have to offer me ch chettina chicken in your life you have never cooked chettina chicken you have cooked bengali chicken of course yes so what do you do you go to the chat gpt and ask ki how do i cook uh, chettina chicken and what are the items i need to buy 
and what is the process of cooking it how much time it takes so the chat gpt will not only tell uh, tell you how to cook it and what are the materials to buy it will also tell you the process to be followed in terms of how much time for uh, marinating how much time for boiling what is the temperature what is the simmer when the uh, uh, your oven has to be simmed out etc etc this particular facility of artificial intelligence has been adopted by a foodbasket.com type of company where if you want to do shopping of vegetables chicken fish etc this foodbasket type of a company gives you an advantage of going into this chat chatbot and say i want to buy Uh, i want my have a friend coming today who wants to eat uh, chetina chicken at my residence please tell me what are the things to be bought buy for me and what are the things how to cook send me a recipe in my mail id think of a generative ai that is artificial intelligence platform is linked to a uh, e-commerce platform where a buyer is buying recipe and materials particularly for a specified dish of india so that is the beauty of chat gpt or a chatbot so what is the chatbot then or chat gpt is it is an artificially intelligence convention conversational tool based on experience from the data can serve suggest items or expectation from its experience in future it might be able to serve external data like latest news from web it is trained to gather information from open source or given inputs and rearrange them like you must have read the information that one particular student was appearing for a business strategy examination in an us business school and a chat gpt was also asked the same question uh, and the chat gpt got c category marks not a plus a b plus b it got c category marks what the chat gpt did it heard the question and scraped the whole world of information available in the internet and created an answer okay that is the beauty of this generative ai why it is called generative transformer generative pre trained transformer because the algorithm of the platform is such a manner that it will it can interpret your question it can understand from your question what it you what answer you are looking for and then it can scrape the right data available in the open source and articulate an answer in its own possible manner and then give you the answer that's why if you read today's economic times first uh, editorial it has talked about one very interesting point that it it has talked about one very interesting point what it talked about is that chat gpt at some type of time given correct diagnosis medical diagnosis listening to the symptoms of a patient at times it is given correct judgment of a particular legal problem maybe at times it can give correct answer but in most of the cases it will not be able to give the correct answer like in case of that examination it scored c what the conclusion the editor of economic times has drawn today and which i agree that you can type in your computer 10 words or 100 words in a minute or 200 words in a minute that is the capability of you that doesn't mean you will be a great novelist that means your writing skill and your thinking skill does not necessarily mean that one particular software in one side it will be a great novelist one side it will be a great advisor for cooking other side it will be a great advisor for marketing strategy the other side it will be a great advisor for music no so chat gpt is something which is a generative pre trained transformer why the word generative has come because it 
its algorithm is such it's an advanced version of google it's 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 capability is such that it can scrape the information available in open source in such a manner that against a particular query which has been given to the chatbot it can generate perhaps a, an appropriate answer against that and that's the beauty of chat gpt so it's an auto regressive language model with an auto regressive process with auto complete program a chat gpt is not it was declared in november 2022 by this company which is called open ai that is the logo of this company which is also the logo of chat gpt and name of the company is open ai uh, this this particular uh, gpt as a program was first started in 2018 where 117 million parameters were there which is nothing 117 means 11.7 crore data or information in 2019 it was 1.5 million parameters 1.5 billion parameters uh, but compared to gpt3 there are 175 billion when the gpt3 came in 2022 which we are talking about open ai it has it has got 175 billion parameters 175 billion parameters and 1 billion is equal to 100 crore So, hundred and seventy-five into hundred, seventeen thousand five hundred crore parameters are used for creating GPT three, and I'm sure it will keep on increasing. So, this program has taken years of development, improving every update, advanced nature uh, of inter internet surfing, a wave of innovation in AI based text generation, and a paper uh, and a language GPT. So ChatGPT uh, is a brand name. Uh, it's a chatbot, and uh, in Google there is a ChatGPT type uh, platform called Bard AI or La MDA. Microsoft has come out with Bing AI, Dial uh, Dialo GPT. Amazon has come with Code Whisper. Uh, application of ChatGPT it can create articles, poetry, write stories, write news reports, and dialogue. produce a large volume of narratives using a small amount of input text that means you give some input and it will create a text create a modular structure with input narratives and and prepare phrases you give him a 5000 word paragraph it can create a 1000 word paragraph that means he it create phrases it has got all types of capability uh, i was talking about the stories to you grocery shopping this lady uh is a kpmg international digital transformation specialist and in charge partner she says however these models came with risk implications that all organizations and individuals should be aware of that said we can't ignore these models they are rapidly becoming part of our daily personal and professional lives we need to determine how to embrace them but safely so uh, i said that raja rammohan rao of uh, uh, one of the greatest uh, social reformist of india said that sob kichui grohon noy sob kichui borjon noy sob kichu bichar koriya grohon ebong borjon that means don't accept outright anything don't reject outright anything think of the good and bad assess the pros and cons and then actually identify whether it is going to be good for humanity and then only adopt it so my perspective here for all of you is that chat gpt like the nuclear arsenal nuclear medicines are doing good to humanity but nuclear bomb will not it is the humanity which is responsible for using this powerful tool for the benefit of humanity so it is the humanity the big picture remains the forte of humans this is unlikely to change as machine do not have the power to ask the right question so uh, typing with a speed does not mean that you are a good uh, uh, you are a good uh, novelist you can become a good novelist 
So they tend to throw up inaccurate answers more often than highlighted success with cracking legal and medical examinations. AI performance in open-ended environments is questionable. Best outcomes are available when human intelligence directs it to problems. That means you as a human being has to direct your data, your big data, your unstructured data in a manner to solve a problem. This is the language which is not of mine. This is the language of the editor of Economic Times. He, write, he writes, there are in the nature of better informed micro decisions that require data analytics beyond human capability. So there is no need to throw away chart GPT. There is no need to throw away artificial intelligence. There is no need to throw away AI as a powerful tool. What we need is to apply our ethics, our thinking, our, our good intentions and apply it. I don't want to discuss this ethical and human issues for solution designing. Uh, maybe uh, the, uh, the day when I talk about quaternium of thinking on that day I will discuss this. I'll conclude my session by a famous quote from Albert Einstein. He said, I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction. The world will have a generation of idiots. I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction. The world will have a generation of idiots. I do not say, I do not know whether actually uh, Mr. Einstein uh, said this, but I can say that uh, uh, we will not be idiots. I can promise uh, maybe all of us sitting in this virtual room can promise on behalf of the entire humanity in fact, we have an artificial, we have a data science professor. So we will use artificial intelligence in the best possible manner. With this promise now, Deepak, I'll be open for receiving questions. Thank you so much, sir. Very insightful, very interesting. Uh, so friends, uh, you can shoot your questions to Dr. Basu. He'll be happy to address your questions. So, May I request? Akash, so I'll read out the questions as they come in the chat box. Uh, yes, sir, you were requesting something. My request is that uh, the professor or participant who has raised the question, he, may, he or she may please uh, open the video because that will help to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Akanksha is asking, can AI through algorithms tame or popularize any brand? Oh, well, certainly. Uh, uh, when human being can make mistakes by not getting into data analytics and may take erroneous decisions. But I gave you the example of PDP loop. So long you were doing your strategy building based on your own thinking process or your data which is there in your ERP system. But the big data, if you can, the big volume of data with the help of artificial intelligence tools, machine learning tools, and deep learning tools. If you can make better sense of data, that will help. Suppose you have a particular uh, advertisement strategy to television, let's assume, make the problem small. Suppose another, uh, another kind of television film your competitor has created for the same product. You find that post launch of their advertisement, and your advertisement, their product has gone at a certain uh, growth rate and your product has gone at a lower growth rate than them. Or their product has caught up urban and rural both and your product has caught up only urban customers both. You can now make out where from you get the urban or rural or or, we, or uh, 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 their product or your product or which pricing price point of your product or their product or which size of the package of their product or your product, where from you get this insight. You get from data analytics only, right? So it is most certainly that branding strategy, advertisement strategy, marketing strategy can certainly be affected or be corrected by artificial intelligence. I'll give you my personal experience. 
I have my personal YouTube channel where there are 52 videos. So I was taking help of Google Ads and I was promoting some of my uh, videos with Google Ad Analysis. Now, after promoting the first video, I spent only 3,000 rupees. The Google Ad people came back after an analysis of the data. He said, do not select America and Europe. Rather, select your South Asian countries because we find that uh, people are coming from that area. Subsequently, I saw the data of my YouTube channel and I found that after Indian cities, Dhaka as a city has got given the maximum viewership of my YouTube channel. So perhaps, ma'am, you have got your answer that next time when I do marketing strategy of my YouTube channel, I'll be definitely not go to Europe and US more. I'll look for Southeast Asia and Asia more. Would I give you the answer? Data speaks, provided you can listen. Data shows, provided you can see. Yes, of course, uh, you have answered my point. Only my concern is can this algorithms or the big data which the computer is trying to get uh, the, the conclusion from, can it be altered? Data can be altered, algorithms can be altered, both can be altered. That's why you have seen one of my slides I was mentioning that other than the three, that is the business insight, the design insight, etc., you should be a data scientist in your business. Today, every single business organization are appointing two professionals. One is the economist, macroeconomist, and other is the data scientist. The data scientist is the specially trained group of people who will tell you that what kind of tool you have to deploy, what kind of analysis you have to do. After the analysis, what is being thrown up, they will be able to read the data better than you as a business manager. So definitely, it is not once in a lifetime kind of decision. You can, it's a dynamic phenomenon. You can always change it. Right, you have answered totally. Thank you so much. It's not SAP, ma'am, that you have adopted SAP, so you can't change SAP anymore. And it's a huge trans transmission uh, problem of transmitting your data and adopting the new uh, software. No. Okay, the next question, please. Yeah, Dipa. next question is from Praveen Kumar. Uh, how do you think should academia adapt to ensure that the students don't get negatively impacted by these AI tools? It's a million and billion and trillion dollar question. Uh, you will, let me put it this way. If I would have been in your class and if this question would have come to me, how I would have answered it? I would have answered that, that my dear friends, your first job is to study first. You prepare your foundation before you take the learning from chat GPT. Chat GPT based learning is your asynchronous learning, right? That means when you are there in front of a computer and you are taking the help of a technology. But synchronous learning is always better. Now there are three types of synchronous learning. One is the real synchronous learning when Professor Krumar, you are in your class. That is where student and teacher in front. The second type of synchronous learning that me and you are doing now, where we are in a virtual classroom, and third type of synchronous learning, which I have introduced in the Institute of Cost Accountants of India. I was the chairman of the syllabus committee of the uh, uh, 2022 syllabus, which will be in book for five years. The book should be run in such a manner that the students will feel that the somebody is invisibly holding my hand and taking me forward. The study material should be written in such a manner. So some people, some academy, academicians say that learning from book is an, uh, is an asynchronous learning. I say that it's a synchronous learning provided the book can hold the hands of students. Having said that, we'll, I will then tell the student 
have been completed your fundamental study in the traditional way. Now, if you want to feel that you want to go for another asynchronous learning or, or synchronous learning, go to YouTube. Listen to best of the professors of the world on the subject. There was plenty of videos are available. Uh, like in classes also, that after the Nobel Prize was declared on, uh, on, on CPM model, that is capital asset pricing model, I, 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 took the, I showed the Nobel Prize winning videos also. After that, if you feel that you need chat GPT, you go to chat GPT. But please, before that, determine your mind in such a manner. And acquire the capability to that extent that you will be able to assess whether the answer coming from chat GPT, whether it is right or not. Because today, when the world is not 200% sure that answers from chat GPT is right, and there are cap umpteen number of information available to you that chat GPT again could score only C category marks or C grade marks. Why do you want to depend on chat GPT? I'm not saying don't go. I'm saying go. But before that, acquire the capability of understanding whether the chat GPT based answers are good or bad or correct or wrong. That much knowledge you should first gather. A very interesting perspective. Uh, there is a question from Dr. Kiran Patil. Uh, he asks that uh, will AI revolutionize in healthcare to the point that it will eventually replace healthcare professionals? Uh, uh, may I know, um, Professor Kiran, can you open your video? Can I see you? Uh, Professor Kiran, uh, let me tell you, surgery has already been revolutionized by uh, AI. You, robotic surgeons are very, very accurately doing surgery. But the medical world, I attended an American conference where a robotic surgeon was present. But the, uh, but the world of uh, doctors and surgeons are saying that even if the robot is, even if the robot is conducting the operation, the, di the robot should not be given total independence to conduct the operation. At the end of the day, robot might have been given 5,000 or 10,000 scenarios of that particular operation to learn from. But every single patient is an unique example. So robot has, or artificial intelligence has already created havoc in the medical science. As you may be knowing that in American universities, MIT and Sloan, et cetera, they have already done very uniquely and successfully prediction of uh, possible heart attacks, possible cancers. So if you are having a predictive analysis, whether a patient is susceptible in subsequent years to cancer, uh, then precautions should be taken. That is always has been revolutionized. I talked about the uh, Urissa's uh, doctor lady who has already studied the bubbles of stomach. So those things have been done. But let me tell you, uh, some of the doctors can smell a patient and say that you are suffering from this particular disease. Can an artificial intelligence do it? Answer is no. Because every single human being is unique from the other human, human being. So the general physicians or doctors of medicines uh, before prescribing the medicine, the examination of the patient or, or reading the physiological, uh, uh, the pathological or the radiological reports of the patient and correlating those findings of the, patho the tests with the patient's physic and the patient past history, the artificial intelligence has not gone to that stage only. I have personally written a paper on applications of blockchain technology for healthcare services and I have presented in an international blockchain conference on, uh, of Asia and Europe. We must apply blockchain and artificial intelligence collectively. Artificial intelligence, robotic process automation is very good in certain section of medical. But my personal view is that general treatment, that means the physician, doctors of medicine, uh, it is yet to. 
because uh, at the end of the day, uh, you can read one lakh patients, uh, 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 yeah, what is called ECG, and then and study the subsequent uh, five years history after the ECG and say, if this is the ECG report and this was the uh, stage of heart attack, you can correlate. That's a machine learning process. But uh, physically seeing and examining a patient uh, by a robot, uh, days are much far. And that is artificial super intelligence. Uh, it's quite far. I can't predict that. But in my lifetime, I'll not be able to see that. Sir, uh, actually, I have seen one sci-fi movie. Uh, in that, uh, there was a uh, chamber uh, integrated to artificial intelligence. Uh, so where uh, the patient can uh, sleep and uh, within an hour uh, or within a time uh, that artificial intelligence diagnose and treat patient without any uh, help. Means it is a sci-fi movie, fictitious movie, but it can be possible in times to come. Yeah, it is. Uh, in fact, a couple of, couple of information I give you. A uh, few days after your, your pillow will start understanding how do you sleep, your sleeping pattern. And your pillow will control your heartbeats and money will read your heartbeats and blood pressure when you sleep. Uh, so, uh, so these things have already started. Uh, this is not artificial intelligence. If you, if you implant a particular sensor in your brain, your Alzheimer disease, which is Elon Musk is working on, uh, is uh, Alzheimer disease link. can be controlled. These things are not artificial intelligence. These things are applications of digital technology for getting information about the patient. Having information and uh, having the data understood, if the machine is told that if the data is this, prescribe this medicine and ask the patient to take that medicine, whether it is 80% correct prescription or 100% correct prescription, I think the world has not seen that day as yet. But the world has already seen that IOTs, healthcare IOTs, Internet of Things, pillows, sensors, uh, even let me tell you one thing. Biodegradable sensor has already been invented where if the sensor is eaten by you, by a glass of water, after that, the stomach operation, if there is any problem in your stomach, the operation time will much get much lesser, or the doctor will get a better picture of your while doing the uh, X-ray or sonography. Those things have been done, but application of artificial intelligence for prescribing a medicine or conducting a surgery without the requirement of a physical doctor with precision, because you can play with the life of a human being at least, those days are very far, according to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, uh, Norina ma'am is uh, putting a comment and then a question that customer satisfaction is the key for any business to flourish. Hence, data is secondary. Can it be reversed to change decisions? I think this is in continuation with what Akanksha ma'am had said a little while ago. Uh, ma'am, can I can I can we have you on the screen? First of all, may, let me compliment you. A wonderful question. Very, very good question. Uh, suppose I am a I am a very, very unhappy customer of a particular brand, and I have a uh, I have sent you a message you being the customer care manager, seeing me personally will create definitely a much better uh, sense for me as a business manager and give much better satisfaction. And I'll give you a live example. When I was using the chatbot of Google for promoting my personal YouTube channel, so long I was talking to the chatbot. After I was giving them a feedback that your answers are not satisfying me. I got a phone call. So that answers your question, Professor Norina. That there is no substitute a human behavior, human being to a human being, giving a personal a touch of heart 
and touch of emotion at the end of this day i say one thing technology doesn't have emotion doesn't have uh, uh, morality doesn't have ethics and doesn't have uh, 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 emotional intelligence but technology has emotional intelligence has ethics and has morality where you need to understand the emotion of your customer when you need to have a heart to heart contact with your customer there is no substitute of human being up to a certain extent you can deal with chatbot but not beyond that so there is this question again from akanksha ma'am <clears throat> will genome study help in attaining better results in terms of predictive analysis in ai uh again it's a healthcare question right akanksha ma'am yes it was just in continuation with the professor kiran actually because these days we are doing organizational genomic study also you know uh, genomic studies uh, are applicable for business leaders uh, i was giving the example of an uh, uh, robot which can differentiate between deepak as a good business, uh, boss and me as a bad boss Uh, similarly uh, organizational genomics is now a matter of analysis but if you are talking of medical genomics i have what i have read about healthcare and genomics analysis i believe when your data universe is very very large which is really a representative universe uh, of data then definitely uh, that can help but my research research and reading says that suppose you have done this study of americans where there is a certain weather condition there is a certain food habit a certain inherited uh, uh, human qualities and human uh, genomic things if you apply the ai findings of that into indian patients or patients of ladakh uh, the the genomic findings of patients of chennai may not be applicable to genomic findings of patients of ladakh because the geography and the inheritance also differs food habits also differs but yes uh, for uh, genomic study uh, is being applied uh, with the help of artificial intelligence for solving problems and this is definitely helping researchers today right thank you so much welcome uh, mr shovik devnath you have put a question but not completed it maybe you can unmute and ask mr shovik sir i'm still i'm i'll just put it in the chat box yeah Maam, you, can you, can ask, you can unmute and just uh, speak you can, ask, you can ask you can ask instead uh, of typing yeah. yes sir uh, very good good evening sir <clears throat> sir i just wanted to know uh, one thing about the chat gpt since a uh, lot of ai and uh, definitely the applications are very big so uh, you know what happens is ki uh, currently i am from the placements but uh, uh, what i feel is ki whenever the recruiter takes a test of the students so it's the complete habit of uh, you can say the habit of the students is usually putting a machine besides uh, them and whatever the recruiter ask and again through the natural language processing the uh, language of the uh, recruiter the question of the recruiter goes into the another system which at automatically finds the answer into the another system and the students usually give the answers now what happens is ki uh, sometimes in a first interaction whatever they uh, interact with the students though it is not mo morally correct and as you said that ethical and moral applications are not there in any of the technology so what happens is ki it's very difficult to uh you know differentiate between any machine generated answers as well as uh, the student generated and uh, definitely what happens is ki ultimately even if he or she gets the job so uh, they are not able to retain that so uh, definitely it's a kind of concern where we cannot uh, differentiate between the answers actually given by the human being and uh, given by the machine so uh, that's where we face the challenge and this is uh, firstly the aspects i would like to know and secondly you know what ki uh, we are definitely uh, have entered into a world which is definitely into a lot of data now 
if i log in into any of the applications such as a chat gpt or you say uh, a few days back if you go to the newspaper uh, if you have come across the news that one of the indian student has also created a law, uh, law bot and uh, it is something where you uh, write down your questions and it will suggest you the legal ways or the legal things uh, how you can uh, go ahead and what are the actions you can take now with respect to that the moment uh, you are writing down anything you need to make an account and ultimately the machine learning what what it does key it takes uh, the uh, humanity or you can say uh, the uh, mind of yours into that and that again is getting generated as a data into the system and uh, and definitely the motives of this these companies are nothing but to take your data to sell it for example if mini application is the way you created the youtube uh, uh, video of yours and uh, from the facebook it has given you the suggestion that this video is for this uh, market segment so definitely they uh, geographically collect the data the moment you uh, create an account now my question secondly would be that how we can bypass it like i do not want to share my intelligence with somebody using my intelligence and making the profit from it so these two aspects i just wanted to know from you so okay first uh, first your first question regarding placement interview first of all this would yes, be sir. possible only if there is a virtual interview okay the uh, students generally there is a tendency of student that he he says ki sir let me have half, half a minute for thinking and by the time half a minute goes he puts a question and chatbot uh, or chat gpt gives you the answer or bot gives you the answer so what do you, one of the solutions you can apply is proctoring so in case of uh, placement interview like we do proctoring for virtual examination you can do proctoring uh, in case of uh, uh, placement interview through virtual mode the second point is uh, one of the things which you used to talk about when we were in pandemic mode that you should be setting question in such a manner that finding an answer from the system would be very difficult or from google would be very difficult so the people who have come from the recruiter side they have to be also asking the question in a different manner but that would be very very difficult so i personally feel here two things should apply one you should apply a proctoring system and you should always tell the student should keep their hands like this okay if they want to prompt the system if they want to prompt the system then perhaps uh, the hands will not help it now let me tell you this will also not help suppose the student has a son or a friend or a brother the brother also listening to the question and brother is sitting by the side he is typing the question brother or sister and he is showing the computer the answer uh, and the answer has been thrown by chat gpt in that case if the student does like this then also it doesn't help so this is a situation where you will not be able to prevent uh, the 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 interviewer must have to be very very smart and he has to throw questions in such a manner that answers can be just in one or two words like uh, mcq type questions and 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 the answer should be questioning should be so prompt that the student don't get time to do that okay and and uh, or it could be possible that the the student is being shown a paragraph and and the and the uh, the guy who is doing the placement interview he is asking from the paragraph what you are reading in front of the your screen what you are getting out of it what management learning points you got out of it if this type of a questions are asked in placement of interviews and chat gpt perhaps won't be applicable but the interview process have to be changed uh, interview question set, 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 setting uh, process have to be changed uh the verbal testing and written testing uh, these are the things have to be put into now coming to uh, i don't know whether you we could i could satisfy you the the sum and substance of my point is that the process of placement interview has to change 
the process of questioneering has to change uh, the process of setting the question paper either on voice mode or a showing mode a powerpoint present uh, presentation mode a powerpoint slide give a story to the student and say answer this question from this i i have this kind of when i teach ca students there is a program of ca uh, uh, post qualification program there i use one page one slide story on a strategic financial management class and one slide story we can spend 40 minutes on that slide only so the method of asking question the method of presenting questions will have to change and it is the, not you as a placement uh, officer of nmims the recruiter the owners goes to the recruiter but of course your your placement corporate can say ki your guys are unethical they are in all the questions they are taking time they can't give any impromptu answer if that is the trend happens and you can surely think that they are taking resort to chat gpt so uh, so you can tell the uh, placement interviewer that don't give any student any time you say that we want the answer prompt and that's the criteria of answering no thinking time for any question to be answered okay my second point to you is that the the instance you gave of a law student creating a bot let me tell you uh, the guy who has written today's economic times uh, uh, editorial he has taken a lot of authority when he mentions that one or two law related point an answer thrown by chat gpt may be good doesn't mean that chat gpt will always give you the right answer the right law related problem because law and answer to laws depends upon facts circumstances and evidences so if you ask a question what is the provision of section number so and so of companies act 2013 chat gpt will definitely give the answer or what is the sebi's provision of so and so chat gpt will give the answer for that you don't need chat gpt even google will also answer but if you give a give a circumstance and tell select the section to which the circumstance will apply chat gpt will definitely take some time and and chat gpt may be able to answer it but it will take some time in whether in all the cases that will be correct or not one doesn't know so if you feel that uh, uh, that a particular judge will be applying chat gpt to give a judgment uh, and in that score a particular law chat bot will give an answer to a particular problem and that will be the right one and students will learn that and go to examination session i don't think that's the right way of doing and students will be doing things at his peril having said that days are not very far that chat gpt will refine itself continue to refine itself and continue the error element of the answers of chat gpt will continue to reduce so we have to live with the situation that we human being have to create a situation where human brain will be applied for more creative purposes for more value generation purposes and routine mundane work will be given to chat gpt or generative ai kind of software tools having said all these things i personally feel human brain will never be redundant that's my view thank you sir perhaps that will be the end of human civilization right sir thank you sir i'm sure there will be many more questions in the minds of the people still uh, because there are many things which people are not convinced about yet about what it can do what it should do and what we should be doing <clears throat> not necessarily as educators about students but how it will impact us in our personal lives also uh, so there are many more aspects to it while education is a key aspect but how it will impact our personal lives is also very important so if there are any questions later on maybe we can uh, send a email to dr basu and he would be kind enough uh, yeah, i would answer. rather prefer i would rather prefer linkedin messages because that is the most right. important media <laughs> to me a linkedin message is more uh, uh, accessible area than an email message fair because enough, if you need enough. a huge document or huge answer mail would be better you can send a mail to me but yeah, sure. so thank you friends for joining and thank you for being such a 
a participative audience. And thank you, Dr. Basu, for your time, for your insights. As always, it has been a pleasure listening to you. And My we pleasure. always we always admire you for the way you have transcended yourself from finance to technology. A great inspiration for all of us. Thank you, sir. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. And I look forward to more such opportunities that if you ask me to talk, I have to learn more. Thank you very <laughs> much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good day, sir. Thank you. Bye.